So this is the Natural Shops project, and we have just been working on the second drafts. Okay, so uh, Neil, would you like to tell us a little bit how you found writing this draft? I found writing this draft really difficult. I've got a story that I was kind of quite happy with, but um, wasn't linking well enough back to the original Shakespeare extract. And I don't feel at this point as if I've actually made that link properly yet. Um, but it's been a really interesting process and challenging process to, to, to kind of get, it, get that linkage right. Okay. And tell us about the links, because obviously tonight we've talked about how we're going to link the two different bits together, the extract with the new play that's been triggered by the extract. I think my major problem has been that the extract um, was set at, at sort of the first meeting between Edward um, and his future wife. And foolishly I've decided to set my second play at the very end point where Edward faces death. So there's a long period of time between the two. Um, and, and that is that transition in characters between the two, which is I, I found difficult. Um, but whether I'm able to, to um, do that in the next draft, hopefully. Um, but hopefully as well with the, the use of um, the actors to potentially set the scene, that may finally get out worlds in there as well. Pat, thanks very much. Okay, Phil, moving on to Phil, and tell us a little, about, a little bit about um, how you found writing the latest draft of your play. Well, I found the uh, feedback from the last session really useful, um, and I think I've incorporated that more or less, so there's more action in it, it's not as, they're not just sitting there talking to each other, there's something going on. Okay, what about the links, obviously, because you've got King Lear, how did you find... What, what are you planning to do with your links? Um, well, the link um, in this is that Loster, in the original, is, is physically blind because his eyes have been gouged out, as you do. Um, and he attempts suicide. In this, he's, he's, if you like, socially and emotionally blind, and he attempts suicide. Um, but it doesn't quite carry on as it did in Shakespeare. Right, OK. Okay, thank you. Okay, so over to Jackie now. So Jackie has joined the project slightly later than everybody else. So you've been working on the first draft. So how did you find working on the first draft? Um, well, I think the, the first thing is that um, I was finishing off two previous projects um, and trying to do my treatment and my first draft um, all within the same time as someone else has been writing for the second draft. So I feel like I've done it at pace. Um, and it's been a really, really good experience to be challenged by that, by the short deadlines and trying to catch up with everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so I've taken my scene from Twelfth Night and I've transferred it into a um, contemporary setting um, and I'm quite excited about what's come up and the feedback has been really helpful tonight. Okay, and obviously you're thinking about, your, you've come in at the beginning, so with the... Uh, with, uh, sorting out the tops of the plays and you know, the platforming of the plays and the links. Uh, so any ideas about that yet or are you still kind of um, ruminating? Yeah. yeah, I think there's a really strong theme about um, from the Shakespeare and, and into the modern take on it um, in both my scenes around um, love and romance and finding love and romance in the world um, and some of the, the barriers that might come up along the way. So. Great, thank you. Okay, so Jilly, tell us a little bit about your Macbeth extract and also how you found writing this draft. Well, I, when I started the project originally, I was particularly interested in the new, new words that I wanted to invent, and I started doing it in a sort of almost a different language, but that was way too challenging, and I decided I'm not giving up on new words, but what I'm doing is I want to get the story tight first. I want to write the entire play in everyday language, then I want to retrofit some interesting words into it. So at the moment I'm still working on the story and obviously all the feedback's really important for that. And what about the links? Have you thought any, how are you going to platform it and how are you going to link the two extracts together yet? Well, I, th I think mine's actually a pretty close parallel, more, more than many, because I've got this very nice post-murder scene from Macbeth. So I've updated it. So, and it, it's really, it's all about the fact that power corrupts. And power can corrupt on a very grand scale if you're a king, but it can also corrupt on a very sleazy scale if you're some sort of local drug dealer as well. So it's bringing it forward in time and down the social scale. So 
great fun. It's brilliant. Thank you very much. OK, and finally, uh, Michelle, if you'd like to tell us a bit about As You Like It. Um, how did you find writing this draft? I found it quite tough, really. Um, it's, it, yeah, once you've sort of got the first draft there and then you get the feedback and there's certain bits you want to keep but you know you've got to get rid of and that's really difficult to sort of just wipe those away and, and sort of let them go. Um, but really good because it tightens up that, that draft as well so it's, it's a really good process and a learning you know, um, process as well. So um, tough but, yeah, good to sort of get, get down to something a bit more... I don't know, more decent sort of <laughs> version of, of the script, so that's um, good. Um, and my links, um, I'm really looking forward to doing this actually. So it's a new challenge again. It's um, a new way of um, that I haven't, something I haven't done before. And I think because of my piece, I wanted to be quite a magical sort of fairy tale feel to it. So I'm maybe thinking of doing something, you know, sort of once upon a time and sort of going, you know, using the language of fairy tales and that type of thing. So using so, the actors as storytellers, yeah. Story tellers, yeah. And using that sort of style and language, you know, within the fairy tale sort of tradition mm. of once upon a time. So, but that's the idea. Whether it comes out that way is another thing. That's great. <laughs> there it goes. Fabulous.